But you, but you've got to operate your business regardless of what's happening in Washington, right? And you say you're an innovator. That's what I'm going to do. So you're you're using artificial intelligence, AI, to see growth. Tell us about the company. Washington D.C. is basically irrelevant to us. Okay, we're about we we live at the intersection of artificial intelligence and this new phenomenon called. Internet of Things, which kind of changes everything away about the way business leaders like uh, Darius Adamchek at, at Honeywell or Francisco Storacci at at uh, Enel or United Healthcare run their business. Right? I think that companies today, there's this phenomenon called digital transformation, and there are companies who are driving that, like Amazon, and companies who are embracing that, like Honeywell, United Healthcare, Caterpillar Tractor, John Deere, and others. And there are companies, maybe 30 percent of the Fortune 500 companies, likely will not exist in 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 30 year, in 10 years if they don't make this transformation. So, what what's the transformation? Tell us how. Well, it let's works. look. I mean, we have. Um, uh, I think Amazon has roughly a quarter of the sales of Walmart and a greater market cap. We have Tesla with one twentieth of the sales of General Motors and a greater market cap. If, te if Amazon decides to go into the pharmaceutical business, Walmart, CVS, and pharmaceutical distributors are out of business overnight. So this big, this censoring of value chains changes everything about the way we deal with customers, everything about the way we manufacture products, everything away about we run our businesses, and companies that miss this transformation are gone. Are, are they awake to it? Are they awake to the fact these leaders of more traditional companies? Because in the world of retail, for example, you had the leaders of, say, a Macy's, all of these kind of traditional stores and chains back on their heels. They've had, they, they've been struggling to catch up since 99, for Pete's sake. And it seems like that there are a lot of leaders across all industries that could be making the same mistake. There are definitely are leaders out there. You look at, you know, Isabel Kosher at, at Enel, excuse me, at Engie. Look at, at 3M. I mean, there are companies that are Jamie Dimon, okay, who are, who are just driving this in a huge way, and there are companies who will be left behind. And we're seeing these retail outlets close their doors every day. I think, you know, companies like Walmart are in jeopardy. Uh, they're, they're, things are changing very rapidly. Do you think Walmart's in jeopardy? In the long run, unless they, yeah. unless they transform themselves. I, transform themselves using AI? Using AI, using digital technology to reach, serve, to, to reach their customers, to serve their customers, and to uh, service their customers. In the tell words of Steve Jobs, tell me what I want before I know I want it. They do a good, you know, we look right. at these guys at Walmart. Am Amazon does a great yeah, job. Amazon, 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 Amazon is using Amazon AI right now it. with its Echo. They're killing it. Yeah. There's people at Amazon. Let's think about the actual, you know, no one's going to shed too many tears about corporate America going through their ups and downs. What is the impact of AI and the, the future that you envision on actual working Americans? I think the big fear of AI is that Amazon has been able to displace lots of workers in Macy's, in some of the other retail competitors, and obviously their workforce doesn't nearly expand to the same t uh, extent that they displace workers. What do you see as the future of the job creation in a world of AI? I think that's a very important issue. And this relates to basically all of what has happened in information technology in the last 50 years. Okay, from uh, supply chain optimization, computer-aided manufacturing, robotics, all of these have been basic. We've been increasing productivity, but we have been replacing jobs. Okay, and I think we, you know, I think this is a very troubling issue, the future of jobs. It needs to be addressed, and while AI will increase safety, increase reliability, it will provide, it'll higher quality services, we'll have all sorts of new business models that were never envisioned before. Like, think about Uber. No cars, no drivers, okay, and, and, and look at what they're doing to the transportation business. But uh, the fact of the matter is, this is going to have uh, an, an adverse impact. A lot of jobs that exist today will not exist in 10 years, and we need to think about that. This is an yeah. important issue. And it, it kind of worries me that when I hear Silicon Valley leadership like Zuckerberg, their, their attitude seems to be, well, let's have guaranteed income from the government as opposed to think about what the new job creation engines might be. In other words, it seems to be they want to like give people a, a palliative, you know, bread and circuses kind of approach instead of actually thinking about 
what are the jobs that could be coming out of this revolution? I think we need to look at K through 12 education more than we need to look at guaranteed incomes for all Americans. So how, how does AI change K through 12 uh, education? Well, I think AI actually changes everything. It changes the way that we deliver products, the way we deliver services, the way deliver we tr the, the the way we deliver education, the way we educate people through distance learning and what have you. But my, I think as it relates to the job market, I mean, we really need to look at a, a tr a K through 12 education to make sure that our uh, you, that that our, our population is trained for the for the next economy. Well, that's the thing. The, the, the skill sets, uh, the, the the gap. Skill sets the need We're not to training our people. Do you see anything in the current administration that might be helping on that front? Uh, I see very little going on in Washington D.C. That's that's going to help. You know, that is what going about to tax be reform? Um, I think if tax reform, you know. Uh, what's the likelihood of me? We're talking about the Trump agenda, okay? Mm -hmm. And 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 the Trump agenda seems to be baked into the market. I don't know what you think the likelihood of the Trump agenda uh, <laughs> happening is in the next three years. So you don't you don't I'm think not we, certain we will it get looks tax very promising. reform? You don't think we'll get tax reform? Um, I you know I don't pay a lot of attention to what's going on in Washington D.C. I, I I wish we would get tax reform, okay? I wish we would get health care reform, yeah. okay? But I but you're not I, optimistic. I, I, it looks like mostly what we see is. Dysfunction in the Congress, dysfunction in the White House, and uh, I think we're we're all on our own. Uh, and, and and so my job is to create jobs. My job is to innovate, and my job is to not worry about it. And this is what we're doing. If you had to name one or two sectors that you think are the growth areas for AI in the next five to ten years, what, what is it? Is it healthcare? Healthcare is probably the biggest. Yeah. United Healthcare. Uh, these guys are massively leading. Uh, you know the application of cloud computing, big data, IoT, and and AI to revolutionize healthcare. I mean, we'll, these people are developing literally a thousand AI-based predictive analytics applications. So they can look, can look at their their insured population, which is 125 million, okay, and predict, say, in the next seven years, with very high levels of precision, who's going to come down with name the disease, say diabetes, so they can deal with these people clinically over the next seven years rather than in the operating room putting seven years. Well, the, the social impact of that is huge, aside from the economic impact, but then, you know, name the disease. And uh, these, these people are driving innovation in healthcare, you know, out of Minneapolis like nobody's ever seen. And, and your company is, is helping to innovate in that. We're very much involved in all of this around the world, in Italy, in, in Europe, in Asia, in North America, in Canada, and uh, we're with the, you know, the leading CEOs of the world who are driving innovation. We're at the table with them. How would you characterize the economy right now, Tom? Uh, it is, I think that, well, the market or the economy? I mean, information technology company. It, it, my segment of the economy is growing. My customers seem, uh, are investing. My customers are hiring. Uh, so it, it looks pretty positive. How, how different is that environment? You're, it's really important to hear you say that your customers are investing again. They're hiring again. How long ago did you start seeing that shift in, in business investment? Well, I think we probably saw it, you know, coming out of you know, 2010, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is when it started to accelerate. But today, you know, we are seeing, you know, massive investments, investments in people, investments in training, investments in AI, investments so in So big AI. acceleration recently. Well, that, that, that sounds good. Tom, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tom Siegel, Chairman and CEO of C3IoT.